uses of standard electrode potentials symbolized as E naught. So before we look at the uses, we want to say that uh, standard electrode potentials are also called standard reduction potentials. Then let us define what a standard electrode potential of an element mean. So a standard electrode potential of an element is simply the potential difference between a standard hydrogen half cell and a half cell of an element that contains one mole per liter of ions of the element measured at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. So the standard electrode potentials have got three uses. One, we use them to compare oxidizing and reducing properties of elements. Number two, we use standard electrode potentials to calculate the electromotive force of cells when two half cells are connected to form a complete cell. And lastly, we use the standard electrode potentials to predict whether a reaction will proceed or not. So, in short, just probably to take ourselves through the three uses quickly, we say that uh, while comparing oxidizing and reducing properties of elements, we check the E naught values. And we agreed that the one with the most positive E naught value becomes the strongest oxidizing agent. This oxidizing agent normally undergoes reduction. So it is reduced because it is an oxidizing agent. And after it has been reduced, now when we are drawing the complete cell, we have to put it on the right hand side. And lastly, because it undergoes reduction, it will still form the cathode of the complete cell. And then the one which is most negative now is the opposite of what we have around here. To calculating EMF, we had a formula. EMF of a cell is given by E0 of the reduced half cell minus E0 of the oxidized half cell. To know which half cell is reduced and which half cell is oxidized, we shall get back to our point one. This video is dedicated to use number three, and that is predicting whether a reaction will proceed or not. Welcome, and we start with what you need to know. A reaction will proceed if EMF of the cell obtained by connecting the two half cells is positive. But it will not, the reaction will not proceed if the EMF we calculate is negative. So I have an example here and I'm giving ourselves very familiar metals, aluminium and magnesium. So we have their E0 values, aluminium being negative 1.66 and magnesium being negative 2.38. Now, if I put aluminium metal in a solution containing magnesium ions, will the reaction proceed? Obviously, we can answer the question looking at the reactivity series of the two metals. But then again, in this section, when you are given the E0 values, we have to argue out our point based on 
calculation of EMF of the cell that will be made when the two half cells are connected. So given these two, we want to now go ahead and answer some two questions here which will explain how E not values or standard electrode potentials are reused to predict whether a reaction will proceed or not. This is in addition to the reactivity series. But remember, in some questions, the identity of the metal will not be given. So I'm just using aluminum and magnesium because I want you to understand these very clearly using what we call familiar metals. So the first question, we are asked, can magnesium metal displace aluminum from a solution of its ions? To answer this question, we shall first assume that the reaction will take place. So if magnesium displaces aluminum, the reaction would be as follows. Magnesium in solid state would react with aluminum ions, which are in solution. And then when they get displaced, we shall get magnesium ions going into solution and aluminum metal coming out as a solid. So if magnesium were to displace aluminum, this would be the reaction. From here, magnesium to magnesium ion, this is oxidation. Then aluminum ions to aluminum metal, this is reduction. So from here, we shall then calculate the EMF of the cell made by connecting magnesium and aluminium. So EMF we have said is the E0 of the reduced cell minus the E0 of the oxidized cell. Now reduced here is aluminium. Looking at our table of values, aluminium had negative 1.66. From it we shall subtract oxidized, which in this case is magnesium, and magnesium had negative 2.38. So when you do the subtraction, I'm able to get positive 0.72 volts. Then we conclude that the reaction will proceed. So in short, magnesium will actually displace aluminium. Why? Because the E cell or the EMF of the cell we have calculated and we have found it to be positive. Okay, let's have a look at the other situation. And here we are asking, can aluminium metal displace magnesium from a solution of its ions? So as usual, we start with a situation where Aluminium being a metal solid is introduced to a solution that contains magnesium ions and we assume that the reaction will proceed. So in this case, aluminium will displace magnesium. We shall have aluminium ions getting into solution and magnesium metal being displaced as a solid. So in this case, from aluminium to aluminium ions, this now is oxidation and magnesium ions to magnesium metal would be reduction because there is decrease in oxidation number. Now, let's go ahead and see the value of the EMF for our new situation. Again, EMF, E reduced, minus E oxidized. So in this case, reduced is now magnesium. The E0 value is negative 2.38. From it, we shall subtract oxidized aluminium, which is 1.66 negative. When you do the math, I get negative 0.72. Now, since it is negative, aluminium, aluminium will not displace magnesium ions since... E 
mf is negative. So in this case, the reaction will not proceed. We have come to the end of our short video, and I believe this helps our students who had issues on how to use standard electrode potentials to predict whether a reaction will proceed or not. I have decided to use familiar examples, but should we use letters like P, Q, ETC to represent metals, then I believe you will now know how to approach your situation. Thank you very much for watching and keep it the Kenyan teacher.